In this video, I'm going to go through the process on how to change a timing chain on an Audi or a Volkswagen 2.0T. You can get different timing belt kits. This kit includes just about everything. It's got all three chains, it's got the sprockets, it's got all the guides. You can get lower cost kits that don't include everything. This kit was about $200. In order to do this job, it's really nice to have some of these specialty tools. This tool loosens up the camshaft bolt. This kit has some configurations for other engine types. This kit has a few extra tools that you may not need for the job. There are more basic tool sets that you can get that could cost less money. This tool set here costs about $200. We're going to be replacing the timing chain on this Volkswagen Tiguan. Now there's a lot of Volkswagen and Audi vehicles that have the same 2.0T engine. To get to the timing chain, we need to support the transmission and motor, remove the motor mount. The motor mount comes off in two pieces, this upper part and another piece that connects right to the engine. Volkswagen and Audi use a lot of these triple square fasteners. We'll remove these two water cooling lines. You can catch the antifreeze in a pan down below. Now we'll unbolt the dipstick. Three bolts will take off the cam okay. sensor. Now we can take off the top cover plate. Removing this cover will expose the double overhead cams. This specialty tool will help in removal of the crankshaft. Two pins will hold the crankshaft stable while you can put a socket and break the bolt loose. So you can put a ratchet on the socket and a breaker bar on the tool. This will give you enough leverage to break the crank bolt loose. With the bolt off, we can remove the bottom pulley. Now this bolt has to go back in, but we need to put this plastic piece on to take up the slack where the pulley was. Now with the pulley off, we can turn the crank and get everything aligned up. This small plastic piece will allow us to take the bottom cover plate off. You'll want to pull the spark plugs out so you can turn the crank over a lot easier without the compression. The timing chains have these different colored links. These colored links line up with marks on the sprockets. If you look at this sprocket, you'll see this little triangle. These colored links line up with these triangles on the sprocket. Now that we have the pulley off, we can go ahead and start to take this bottom plate off. This bottom plate will expose all the chains. To get this plate off, we need to take this turbo elbow off. One of the bolts is hidden by this tensioner. You need to pull the tensioner back and then take the bolt off. Now we can pull this bottom plate off and see all the chains and sprockets. Now with everything exposed, you can start to see, here's the sprocket that goes on the crankshaft and the chains. Here's the plastic chain guides. Some of the older chain guides are a little brittle. Before you take the chains off, you need to lock the camshafts with these special tools. There's a tooth that will engage on these gears. When you take the tensioner off, these will hold the camshafts in the exact position. Without these on, the camshafts will move and you won't be able to connect the chain and line up the links. If these weren't here, the camshaft would move and it would be very difficult to put the chains on in the right location. With everything secure, we can start to remove the bridge. This specialty tool will allow us to hold the camshaft so we can break it loose. The bridge is the aluminum bracket that holds the two camshafts together. Once it's unbolted, you can pull off the bridge. But before you do, you have to pull off the tensioner. This will remove tension from the chain and allow you to get the bridge off. You'll want to check the condition of these valves inside. Now with the camshafts secured and the bridge off, we can start to remove the chain guides and the chain. This smaller chain drives the oil pump. Then one by one, you'll remove all these plastic chain guides. The chain will get looser and looser. So I lay all these out in the order and then line them up with the new parts. Just note the orientation so when you start to put the new ones in you put them in the exact same way. They're only able to go in one way though. Now we've released the third and final chain. So now we can pull it off and start putting on the new stuff. Our kit came with a new sprocket. Not all of them do, but this one did. 
with the bolt out, you can pull the sprocket off, and the sprocket only goes in one way. It has a flat spot. So just give it a good pull, and it'll come right off the crankshaft. Just notice how the splines connect, and especially this flat spot. There's a little mark on this sprocket, and these yellow marks will line up with it. You'll feel it click into place properly. Once you're sure that it's aligned properly, go ahead and tap it with a rubber mallet. Just note where the triangles or the marks on the sprockets are because this is where the colored chain links are gonna go. When you put the chain on, see the blue link and the triangle line up? And here the dot lines up with the colored link. Now the upper pulley is the water pump and it doesn't need a mark. Now we'll put all the new chain guides back in. From the condition of some of these guides, I think it's more important to replace the guides than the chain. As you replace the guides, just make sure that the marks line up with the colored links. Once you get all the guides put in, you don't want to release the tension on the tensioner until the aluminum bridge is put over top of both of your camshafts. So you can see that the colored links are all lined up with the marks. So now it's time to put the second chain on. This will connect the crankshaft to the camshafts. So with the camshafts locked, you should be able to line up both of the colored links to the marks on the camshaft. So take your time and just line up the marks. If you look closely, you can see the colored link with the mark. These links are gold and you see the dot right here. This marks more like a groove. And at the bottom of the engine at the crank, you want to make sure that everything's lined up there. Now add in all your plastic guides. Once the plastic guides are in place, we'll be able to put the tension with the tensioner on. But don't put the tensioner on before you put the bridge over the camshafts. Now before we put the bridge on, we're going to go ahead and put the chain for the oil pump on the last sprocket. It'll slip right on and then we can put the tensioner on. Now you don't have to worry about timing marks on the oil pump. The chain guide yeah, is fine. the tensioner. Or at least the tensioner is built into it. Now we'll put the aluminum bridge into place and tighten everything up with our specialty tool. Now we can release our tensioner and start putting everything back together. So we can clean off all the parts, put the gaskets back into place, and then put everything back together in reverse order. Now that all the tension is back on the chain and all the marks lined up with the colored links, now we can put our pulley down at the bottom, get the serpentine belt back on. Some of these specialty tools really make this job easier. We'll hook up all the ducting for the turbo, put the motor mounts back on, the one on the side and the one on the top. Then we'll hook up all the water pipes. We can lower the jack and then put the fluid back in the radiator. Now everything runs like a top again. I really appreciate your time and thanks for watching.